South Africa, the rainbow nation, their motto says it all, unity and diversity. As one of the most diverse nations on the planet in both humans and nature, it truly has lots going on. And as one of the richest nations in Africa, it seems to be doing well. But in the last decade or so, it has been obvious that South Africa is on a downward spiral. Falling birth rates, rising unemployment, growing poverty, and the world's highest inequality rates are all symptoms of a state about to fail. The unity may be in its diversity, but the diversity of South Africa is certainly not all equal. And as a country that only exists from a previous colonial rule, disregarding the pre-existing groups of the region, it makes little sense for the borders of South Africa to be the way they are. The growing unrest in the nation, nonsensical borders, and pockets of diversity show people one thing. South Africa could likely have a civil war, and if not a civil war, the unrest will likely bring some sort of revolt or revolution in the nation. Just one possible form is civil war. Is this the future of South Africa? Can it save itself? The downfall of South Africa will likely come from two sources, diversity and an unequal economy. Let's start with diversity. As I said before, the geography of South Africa is extremely diverse. For the most part, South Africa has a Mediterranean climate which promoted some growth of native populations. The area near the coast are low-lying and ideal for farming and building civilizations. But as you go into the interior, there is a sharp turn upwards known as the Great Escarpment or the Drakensberg Mountains. These are steep cliffs which run across almost the entire country separating the interior from the coast, meaning the people who lived here were also separated. In the south there are the Cape Fold Mountains, essentially isolating the Cape from the rest of the country, perfect for setting up a colony to stay as only yours, like maybe Cape Town or Port Elizabeth. The interior of the nation is mostly flat, sitting on high plateaus, but the central plateau is not equal. Due to diverse rainfall, the east is wet and the west is very, very dry. The Orange River also runs through the central plateau, bringing more water and places to build at least some settlements in the desert. It's for this reason why most of the population lives in the east of the country, in regions like KwaZulu-Natal and the High Veld, where water is plentiful enough to make civilization and cities. This is also where most of the native population lives, with most of the descendants of the colonizers living in the Cape. That leaves only the East Central Plateau made up of the Kalahari Desert and Great Karoo. Nobody really lives here though as it's mainly made up of desert and dry land. There are some small settlements however, mainly by rivers. There is no real main colonizer or native population in the West because these regions did not develop naturally. The climate of South Africa varies wildly from east to west and north to south, making it one of the most diverse geographies on earth. And the mountains were a natural separator between native and non-native peoples. South Africa's geography was simply made to divide. Okay, but how diverse are the people? After all, you're not called the rainbow nation for your similarity. To put it into perspective, in a nation of only 60 million people, there are 11 official languages and hundreds of other smaller languages spoken. The most spoken language is Zulu, but it is only spoken by 22% of the country, followed by Kosa at 16%, Afrikaans at 14%, and English at 10%, although many people do speak English as a second language. These languages are not found evenly throughout the country though, they are mainly found in distinct bubbles. Afrikaans in the Cape and West, Kosa in the Eastern Cape, and Zulu in the Natal region, with many others like Suthu, Swana, and Pedi in the densely populated Northeast. South Africa is so diverse that they need three capitals in order to avoid one group taking control of the country. The executive capital in Pretoria, the judicial capital in Bloemfontein, and the legislative capital in Cape Town. Not to mention that their largest city and financial center is actually Johannesburg, and you have four cities with huge influence over the country. Since many different language means many different ethnic groups, South Africa officially divides this group into four categories black for the native African groups, white for the descendants of the colonizers, Asian mainly for Indian immigrants, and colored for a mix between these groups. Around 80% of South Africans are black, with around 8% both colored and white, and 4% Asian. However, these groups are so unequal that there's no point in looking at South Africa's demographic statistics as a whole. 
the main historical difference and modern difference being between white and black South Africans. For instance, 99% of whites received at least some schooling, whereas only 78% of blacks had. The median age for black Africans is 21 years old, and for whites it is 35 years old. 95% of whites have running water on their property, whereas only 51% of blacks do, and 99% of whites have access to electricity, only 62% of black Africans do. These stats are just a symptom of how fundamentally divided South Africa is between its ethnic lines. It really is a tale of two nations. The difference which shows us the most though is the difference in their economies. A staggering 28% of black Africans are unemployed, but only 4% of whites are. And the median white income is around 4,000 US dollars, whereas for black South Africans it is only 750 US dollars. South Africa is broken and the damage is too much to fix. Especially since these groups have historically and nowadays actively worked to harm other groups. The South African population of 60 million will peak at around 80 million by 2080, mainly growing through black African growth, whereas the white population is going to shrink. Unless South Africa can make itself a more equal society, this will only widen the already massive inequality in the nation. How come South Africa is so badly divided? To answer that, you need to take a look back at its past. Bantu-speaking peoples migrated to what is now South Africa around the 400s, setting up the path for civilizations to develop in the region. What is now the Zulu, Kosa, Tswana, and most other native Africans came from this Bantu expansion. They came into contact with Europeans around the 1400s when Portuguese sailors went by looking for a route to Asia. The Portuguese had a lucrative spice trade in the Indian Ocean, but as their power began to fade, the British and Dutch stepped into their place. In order to sail to the Indian Ocean before the Suez was sawed in half, you had to reach around the Cape of Good Hope though. It is this reason why the Dutch decided to set up a colony in the Cape. This is where their Dutch language was mixed with local dialects to create Afrikaans and why even nowadays Afrikaans is the main language of the Cape. The British did a little expanding and ended up in control of the Cape in 1806 when now British immigrants came in. The Dutch didn't want to be British though, so they left westward into the Natal and Highveld regions. Of course, the Africans didn't want to be Dutch either, so there were some bloody wars. The Dutch nomads known as Boers set up some states known as the Boer Republic. Now there's the British colony in the west, the Boer Republic in the northeast, and African kingdoms in the east. You could just tell there was some tension. And oh boy, there is about to be some fighting after the discovery of diamonds boosted British efforts to control the land. The Anglo-Zulu War and the two Anglo-Boer Wars resulted in British victory over the land we know now as South Africa. But it was only eight years after the Second Boer War when Britain granted independence to South Africa in 1910. But there is still the question for the white owners of South Africa. What do we do with the natives? Based on other nations' racial laws, the white South Africans first passed laws to restrict black ownership of land, culminating in institutionalized segregation known as apartheid. It is now when the government split the population into race groups to separate themselves. Apartheid entailed segregation of public areas, events, housing, and employment along racial lines. This is the event which severely killed South African prosperity. While the whites at the time were essentially living in a first world nation, the blacks, even nowadays, were much, much poorer, stunting national growth since they are the majority of the nation. It was obviously not without fighting though, as groups like the African National Congress carried out guerrilla warfare in opposition to apartheid, and many countries boycotted South African businesses. Eventually, the government had to give in, starting with the Malabatini Declaration in 1974, promising but not giving equality to all South Africans. Then, in 1990, the ANC was no longer banned. Nelson Mandela was freed from prison and in 1992, a referendum passed to end apartheid. 1994 was the first time South Africa had a full election, ending in an ANC landslide. The ANC has won every single election from then to this day, controlling South Africa through the entire post-apartheid era so far. But the damage of apartheid was already done. During this period, poverty among both blacks and whites increased, unemployment rates grew, and the HDI fell until 2005, yet it's likely that was due to the AIDS pandemic. 
Racial tension and violence are still rampant and most neighborhoods are still basically segregated. The future of South Africa looks bleak because South African history has been horrible to its citizens. In July of 2021, South Africa entered into its worst unrest since apartheid. Violent protests ravaged KwaZulu-Natal and Gauteng. Around 350 people died, over 3,000 people were arrested, and around 50,000 businesses were destroyed. This included racial violence between the black and Indian groups in the town of Phoenix. This violence only lasted for about a week, but it is a sign that major unrest will break out in South Africa. This specific unrest was triggered by the arrest of former President Jacob Zuma, but the underlying regions were much, much more. Currently, over half of all South Africans live in poverty. That is an insane number, especially for a G20 nation. A quarter of the nation lives in extreme poverty, unable to purchase even basic food. But while millions of mainly black South Africans are impoverished, the top 10% of South Africa owns 95% of all the wealth in the nation. It is the most unequal society on this planet, almost entirely due to the legacy of apartheid. In addition, economic growth has trended downward since 2010, long before the pandemic started, and when COVID did start, there was no money to spend on fighting it. There is a proposed 500 billion rand stimulus package to support workers during the pandemic. The government ended up only spending 36 billion rand. At the same time the government ran out of money, households ran out of money too. In January of 2021, 39% of houses could not buy food. The already massive poverty only grew during the pandemic. South Africa is the world's 35th largest economy, but that does not mean much when the actual people have none of the wealth. South Africa is a powder keg. The extreme inequality and major diversity of the nation is a recipe for civil violence of some sort. All South Africa needs is a trigger. Good thing we have some. The large amount of corruption in the one-party government, if they overstep their boundaries, it might happen. If someone of great power in South Africa is arrested or even dies, it might happen. Any preferential treatment of one race over the other might trigger it. Or perhaps climate change might do it. Cape Town is currently at a threat of running out of water. If the city or the region were to run out of water, unrest will almost definitely happen. Honestly, it is only a matter of time before something does happen to cause the inevitable. South African society has been one plagued by poverty, inequality, and hardship for most of the population, whereas for the others it has been the richest and most successful country in Africa. When looking at the national picture, it ignores the fact that half the nation is struggling to stay afloat. Its geography acts as a natural divider and its bounties of ethnic and linguistic divisions help the nation stay separated. A history of legal segregation only made the already divided nation even worse, and ever since apartheid ended, the already poor nation has been moving backwards in economic progress. As a final point, just look at Lesotho. If South Africa were truly united by geography and ethnicity, there wouldn't be a nation of 2 million sitting right inside its borders. South Africa claims to have unity in diversity, but realistically, its diversity has only split it apart. If something tragic happens in South Africa, don't be surprised if it ends up in a civil war.